Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I created this effect here, which is a, a nice sort of wind blowing aspect to the shader of all my grass foliage that I painted on my terrain. Uh, this is completely independent of you know the position or UVs of the grass itself. Uh, we're basically using a world space texture, which means a texture that is applied based on the world, not at all relative to the objects. Uh, which means that it can be translated and moved independently of each of the objects. Uh, and that's just sliding over the top and controlling the world position offset of the material that is on these objects. And this would probably work you know, equally well on, say, leaves of a tree or uh, you know, anything of that nature. So we've got that kind of coolness going. Let me show you how it's working. Okay, so we've got a shader here and you can see I've told it to preview on my mesh so you can actually see the effects of it um, and you can see we've got something plugged into world position offset the rest of the shader is just standard uh, multiplying the color by a little color offset that I can control in a instanced version of the material alright but this setup over here is what I'm using for the wind So basically what we're doing, first I'll explain it sort of generally and then go into detail. We have this normal map texture, you know, and it's got some ripples to it and looks kind of neat. This is actually the same normal map as what is applied to my grass terrain just because I got lazy. I don't have a normal map specifically for wind, but this worked out really well. Um, and then that is being mapped in world space. It's being panned, uh, pan left and uh, left, right and forward and back a little bit. Uh, so it's just sliding across a world space coordinate and then that is simply blending into the original positions of the vertices for the base so the bottom of it stays stuck to the ground and then that's being plugged into world position offset so that's in general how this works now let's get into detail alright so there's two very important well three very important nodes for uh, doing any sort of world position offset um, basically if you wanted to do say displacement or something uh, this vertex normal WS basically that stores the current position of whatever vertex is currently being controlled or currently being shaded I guess um, that stores its current value so if you plug this node directly into world position offset you're gonna see nothing it'll look exactly as it did but what you can do then is multiply this by other values uh, or blend between it as I'm doing here um, but if you multiplied this by like two, basically, I believe every, you know all of your objects would just look like they got really fat because all of your vertices would be pushed out uh, in the normal direction by two um, or two times whatever they were. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so that's important. We'll be blending into that later down this tree. Um, but then there's two really important nodes up here. We've got this world aligned texture node, and we've got this absolute world position node. Um, I discovered these things uh, in part to flashed on the uh, free node Unreal Engine chat room. Uh, he definitely helped me out on this, so thanks to him. Um, or her, I don't know. <laughs> um, so we got world aligned texture. Uh, basically world aligned texture, what that does, well typically when you're mapping a texture it is in UV space, which is what this text chord node is for. Um, that would be, you know, if you're looking at your your standard static mesh here and you look at the UVs that's telling it how the texture is mapped to the uh, to the mesh and you can definitely do displacements or world position offsets based on UV space but it gives you a different effect and it's gonna the big problem there is it's gonna be the same for every single instance of that uh, that mesh because they all have the same UVs um, so by using world space that allows me to sort of get all of these distorting independently based on a sort of global texture that's moving across this whole plane. Um, oops, wrong window. Let me go into my material again here. Alright, so that world position, or sorry, this uh, world aligned texture, all this is doing is it's mapping this normal map in world coordinates, which means when I run a panner on this, it's actually sliding it across the world, not necessarily across the UVs like it normally would be. Uh, and really this panner is not really made as far as I can tell to work with world position type stuff but for this particular scenario it works perfectly alright so then we have this absolute world position 
and that is storing the current uh, world coordinate of the area that I'm shading, I guess. I honestly don't quite get exactly how this is storing its information or what I'm editing here. Um, but suffice to say, this is storing the world position. All right, <laughs> so we're taking that. Um, and then what I wanted to do is I wanted to pan this texture in two of those dimensions. Uh, but I had a vector 3 here. This is storing x, y, and z values. So left, right, forward, back, and up and down. And I really didn't need the up and down, which is stored in the z channel. So I split off the z channel, which in this case it's calling RGB. So x, y, z. We're splitting off z here. And I just ignored that for the time being while I set up my panning. Uh, which allows the panner to work because that only works with vector 2s, which is what a typical text chord would be. Alright, so I just uh, split that off and then I recombine just the red and green values or the X and Y, depending on how you want to look at it. Alright, then we're running this panner. I'm telling it to pan you know, 60 and 160, pretty big values. Um, there's a lot of really big values in this just because you're dealing with the whole world. Um, so uh, I'll show you that on the scale too, is insanely huge. Um, and then after I do my panning, I'm simply plugging back in the original Z value um, just because I needed something there. I probably could have plugged a zero in there too, just a constant, I don't know. But for whatever reason, I just put back in the original one. Uh, didn't feel like messing with it. All right, now we have this world align texture node, which, as I said, maps a texture in world space. And the only thing you have to plug in for this to do something is the texture object. And that's the thing about this normal map, it's not a texture sampler, it is a texture object. So you can create that over here, obviously, just by typing in texture object. Uh, the difference between texture object and texture sampler is that texture object exists without any mapping whatsoever until you assign it mapping. So until it is projected or something like that, it really doesn't exist as far as anything is concerned, I guess. Uh, you could think of it that way. Um, but anyway, we plug in that texture object, that tells the world align texture what to map, uh, what position to use for that mapping, and then lastly we plug in a texture size, which is for the scale of how it's going to map it. And you can see my scale here is absolutely insanely huge. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually based on world coordinates, because it seems like that's even too high for that. Um, but suffice to say, I had to go up to 18,000 before I actually saw, uh, you know, the, the texture moving across you know, scaled up enough to actually feel like a gradual change over the grass. Um, so yeah, so this, so this will then spin out your texture based on you know wherever the model is currently at and where the vertices currently are. Uh, it'll export that texture for them. Uh, they call it XYZ texture because it's storing, still storing the X, Y, and Z values. Uh, but depending on how you're using this, you could look at this as RGB uh, if you're using this for you know, actually placing a you know, color map. Uh, in this case, I'm using it for world position offset, so X, Y, Z makes sense, but, um, you know, channels just hold data. That data can be for anything, really. All right, so that, that comes out with uh, three channels, red, green, and blue. Uh, the red is your X, the green is your Y, and the Z is, or the uh, blue is your Z value, which is up and down. Now, for my purposes, I didn't want to distort my grass up and down, so I cut out the blue channel entirely. I, I masked this to just red and green, so we've already just deleted the blue channel right there. And then I go and append just a zero to this because all of my texturing does require actually having three channels of color. So after I did that, I just appended a, a nullified uh, Z there, or blue channel. I just multiplied everything by 16 to make it a really strong distortion effect. And then I plug that into a linear interpolate node or LERP, which you can create just by holding down L and clicking, by the way. Um, and basically this is blending between that nice distortion map that I created and my original position, which is stored in vertex normal WS, as I explained earlier. Uh, and we're blending between those based on a gradient, just a simple gradient. And the gradient itself is in UV space uh, because we want you know, the base of this uh, to have no distortion and the top to have full distortion and my UVs are laid out such that you know, a vertical gradient from bottom to top would put zero on the bottom, one on the top. Uh, so that worked out pretty well. 
Um, so all I had to do is plug that into V gradient, which is a vertical gradient, U gradient is a horizontal, and that's it. So then we'd simply take the output of that, and if we want to look at that real quick, let's look at what that's actually exporting here, or what that's sending to the world position offset. Now the it's going to look like it's glowing because I had to multiply my values by so much here. Uh, if I were to unplug that, uh, you'd see it looking a little more normal. There you go. So this is really what it's getting as far as uh, position offset. But you'll notice the base of this object never changes color. And that's because it's just colored based on its current position and that's how it's staying. Um, these up here are getting a lot of distortion. Alright, so let me plug that back in how it was. Go ahead and hit apply. So yeah, then we just plug that into world position offset. You know, apply, save, and you get a really cool um, distortion effect going over the top of them. Now, like I said, this isn't perfect. Some of these things bend in really weird ways, and I'm not entirely sure how to uh, combat that. Um, sort of just having shorter grass. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this works pretty well for simply just being a shader trick. I think it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, now, if you wanted to do something like, oh, let's say seaweed uh, going around underwater or something, you could actually, you know, keep this. You, you could get rid of this stuff here, keep the, uh, the Z value going as well. And that way, as it's panning, you'd actually get up and down motion as well. Um, which might be good for really long objects and you can actually add in uh, I apologize because I don't really know how to do this but you can actually uh, you know pan this vertically as well uh, potentially with an expression at that point would be easier but you could uh, you know have a wave moving up the object that way or something of that nature so I don't know there's a lot of things you can do with this sort of solution so Hopefully this has been useful to you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, hopefully I'll be able to answer them, but just leave them in the comments below. I am still very new to this, so no promises. Um, but yeah, uh, also I have included, uh, on the description of this video, I've included a paste bin link, which is basically I just selected all this, hit copy and pasted it into paste bin. And what you can do then is load that page up, uh, hit control A to select all the text, hit control C to copy. And when you do so, you will simply be able to go into your own material uh, material editor and hit paste and you'll get my whole tree and you can see how I set it up. The only thing that won't come in obviously will be my normal map. You'll have to set that up yourself. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this is useful to you guys. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. See you later.